Hi, I'm Andy Winberg from Backcountry Access, and this is Mike Duffy from Avalanche One. And today we're gonna to take you through Transceiver Searching 101. While transceiver searching is a large part of the avalanche rescue, you also want to make sure you're competent with probing and shoveling as well. In addition to those parts of the avalanche rescue, you want to make sure you're also familiar with site control, leadership, first aid, and evacuation. Today we're going to take you through all the phases of the transceiver search, including the signal search, the course search, find search, and pinpointing, which is probing. So today we're going to go through different transceiver drills. We'll be using the Tracker 3 and the Tracker S. All the techniques we're going to show you today can be used with any avalanche transceiver on the market. An avalanche transceiver serves two main functions. It transmits a signal and receives a signal. Your avalanche transceiver is always worn under your outermost layer of clothing. It's also acceptable to wear your avalanche transceiver in an internal pocket that has a tether and was built specifically to carry a transceiver. With the BCA Mount Pro Vest designed for the motorized market for snowmobilers and snow bikers, the transceiver pocket is in the front. Before heading out for the day, be sure to check the battery strength in your Avalanche transceiver. We recommend replacing the batteries once they get to 40%. It's always a good idea to carry extra alkaline batteries in your backpack. Electronic devices like cell phones, heated gloves, and GoPro cameras can interfere with avalanche transceivers. It is recommended that your transceiver is always 12 inches or 30 centimeters away from these devices. Transceivers are most susceptible to interference in search mode where electronics can create a ghost signal that is capable of disrupting directional arrows and distance readings. It's important to turn your avalanche transceiver on before heading into the backcountry for the day. We recommend putting it on and turning it on, and not turning it off until you get back to the car, house, or bar at the end of the day. It's important to conduct a trailhead check before heading out. This ensures everyone's transceiver in your group is transmitting and able to search if an accident were to happen. The signal search is the first phase of an avalanche rescue. If there's a last seen point, you can begin your signal search there. If you have no last seen point, you're going to cover the entire debris field and try to acquire a signal. Your zigzags are going to be about 40 meters apart and you're going to come within 20 meters of each flank of the slide path. You're moving fast and your whole goal is to acquire the signal. It's important to scan back and forth with your avalanche transceiver. This allows the antennas to change coupling and potentially acquire a signal even faster. Once you've acquired a consistent signal with directional lights, you enter the course search. In this phase of the avalanche rescue, you're slowing things down from a run to a walk. Pay close attention to the distance readings and directional lights on your avalanche transceiver. Continue following the distance readings and directional lights until you reach about 5 meters. If the distance readings happen to be increasing, you can do a 180 degree turn and move in the opposite direction. As you move through the course search, you'll notice you're moving in a curved line. That's because avalanche transceivers work on flux lines. These are electromagnetic signals that your transmitting transceiver sends out. Once you're within three to five meters of that transmitter or victim, you enter the fine search. Here you're slowing things down to a crawl. You'll notice that as you get closer to that transmitter, your directional lights will turn off at two meters. At this point, you're really looking for the lowest distance reading. What you're going to do is bracket. Work through that low distance reading until your numbers jump up again. Once those numbers jump back up, come back to that low distance reading. Move your transceiver out to the left until those numbers jump up, then come back to that low reading and confirm it. Then move your transceiver out to the right until those distance readings jump up, and then move it back to that low distance reading to confirm it again. In the fine search, it's important to make sure your transceiver remains in the same orientation. It's important to note that that low distance reading is going to be the burial depth, which will give you an idea of where to start probing and how deep you're going to have to shovel to excavate the victim. Once you've completed the find search phase and confirmed that lowest distance reading, you're entering the pinpointing phase. Here you use your avalanche probe to confirm the exact burial depth and location of the victim. The snowmobile can be a great tool in avalanche rescue. You can use the snowmobile to transport searchers up the hill, transport yourself up the hill, and then you can walk down the hill. You can also use the snowmobile for the signal search. You pull up onto the debris, step away from the snowmobile. See if you get a signal. If you don't, continue a search pattern. 
One thing to keep in mind is the snowmobile creates significant electrical interference. You cannot drive around on your snowmobile with your avalanche transceiver in your hand or do a transceiver search too close to a running engine. With a Polaris Axis, you need to be six to eight feet away from the snowmobile so you don't get electrical interference. In this next scenario, we're going to cover one searcher with two victims. In most cases, this is solved as a set of single burials. The searcher is going to find that first victim, excavate down to their waist so they can breathe easily, so their chest and lungs have room to expand and contract. You're going to turn off their avalanche transceiver or turn it into search mode and then move on to the next victim. If you get to that first avalanche victim and you're unable to turn off their avalanche transceiver, you can use an advanced feature like signal suppression, marking, or flagging to show you the next signal to move to. In this next example, we'll take you through a scenario where we have two searchers and two victims. We'll spread out about 40 meters apart and search straight down the debris pile. It's important you don't leave your searching lane until you have a distance reading that's smaller than your search strip width. Once you acquire a signal, you're going to follow that in through the course search, find search, pinpointing, and excavation phases of the rescue. In some scenarios, one victim may be in range while the second is out of range. In this type of scenario, both searchers will be led to this first victim, but both searchers should not focus on this first victim. One searcher can focus on excavation and clearing that airway, while the second searcher uses big picture mode, flagging, or a marking function to find the second victim. For scenarios involving more than two victims, check out our video on complex multiple burials at backcountryaccess.com. Practice with your avalanche transceiver. The time of a rescue is not the time to figure out how to use your transceiver. You want to become proficient with your transceiver ahead of time. Take an avalanche course so you learn how to avoid getting caught in an avalanche and how to ride according to the avalanche danger and problems. Stay safe out there.